In this lesson, we're going to take a look at how we can lighten pictures as well as select specific areas within a photo. And um, our assignment focused on the use of an SLR camera using aperture and ISO and shutter. And we have different settings for the shutter. You can see here they're dark, and here it's the lightest, and here it's kind of mid range. And we also have over here aperture. And in this case, we adjusted the uh, f from 2.8 to 4.5 to 8. And then when it still wasn't light enough, so here we go, we're lightening it up, opening up the aperture. When it still wasn't light enough, we, we cranked up the ISO to 400. And we're going to take a look at those photos now in Photoshop. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to open. Let's start with these three. I'm going to leave the 400 ISO out and just start with the th the uh, three that we shot at 200 ISO, 1 one twenty-fifth of a second for shutter, and the only thing that is different in each of these photos is the F. I'm going to select all three by holding Shift. Okay, now this is obviously the darkest one. If I want to see my uh, settings for the camera, I could go to File, Info. Preview also has this, by the way. And you can see the exposure is 1 one twenty-fifth of a second, F8, ISO 200. This photo kind of looks lost. Now, for lightening and darkening images, we're going to focus on the Image Adjustments menu. <clears throat> and specifically for the lightness and brightness, uh, we're going to either use Levels or Curves. And for Colors, we're going to use Hue Saturation. So I'm going to start by taking a look at Levels. Here we can see that on the bright end of the spectrum, that's if you had bright reds and yellows and whatnot, there is no information on the camera. In other words, there are no pixels in this brightness range that have lit up. So for this, but you can see some information over in the darker area here, there is some data which represents pixels or color information. So if we slide this, the white range over, you'll notice the mids, those would be typically like mid-level blues, mid-level reds, whatnot. We call them the mid-tones or mid-range grays. If you slide the white arrow all the way down, you'll notice that our picture, as we slide it to the beginning of where the grid starts to show data, we start to get some color information. But it's not beautiful. But, it, you know, you can salvage this picture. The only thing is, if we really zoom in here, you'll notice that because there was so little detail in the amount of information that showed up on the levels curve, it, everything is kind of chunky. Like you have one big blotch of green here and a different kind of khaki green over here and a dark green here. And they're all kind of clustered together. So it's not a detailed picture. It almost looks like kind of blobs of painting yeah, that you'd see in a painting. So bringing up levels again, I go to image adjust levels, which is command L on your shortcut. I drive it up even more. Let's zoom out. I'm doing command minus sign to zoom out. You, you can see even in the flowers, it's kind of one solid red. If I reduce it, maybe I catch a few shades of red. Normally, normally here there should be about 256 shades of red if it was a well balanced uh, photo. So that was for a photo that's underexposed. Now if we come over here, we improve the exposure a little more. So here our F was at 8. Okay, so the iris of the lens was somewhat closed. Here we put it at 4.5, which opened it a little more. Now that's often confusing because the lower the number, the more you're opening the iris of the lens to let more light in kind of like the pupil in your eye. And so 4.5, but we could see already, we didn't even have to do levels yet, and we could see some color. So if I go to levels here, and I drag this way up, you're going to notice that it's still blotchy, but not as blotchy as before. You've got a little more data in the photo, uh, variation in colors, than, say, this one. And you can see the difference. Oops, between this one and this one. There's a little more detail here. Then we open the aperture more by bringing the F down to 
Like I said, it's counterintuitive. When you lower the aperture, you're actually opening the iris of the, uh, the lens. So think of it like this. If your photo is really dark, then you need a lower F. If your photo is really bright and washed out, then you need a higher F. High light, high F. Low light, lower your F. Okay, so this one, still not perfect, but salvageable. And you can see there's almost half the graph here without any data. You drag this up, but it's still a lot better than before. So that, that was my adjustment of three different F levels, aperture levels. Now my F was at the lowest it could go. It was opened as wide as it could go at 2.8. So at this point, reverting back to the triangle of light, I had one of three options. F I had exhausted, I put it as wide as I could at 2.8. Now I could either slow the aperture down. Right now it's at 1 1 25th of a second. I could put it at 1 1 100th of a second, which would have made this picture even brighter. Or I can crank up the ISO, which I did to 400. And that's what you see. Oh, I didn't open that picture. And that's what you see over here. If I open the 400, it's a little better. And you can see the range of color information is much better. Another way to adjust your colors or your brightness is to go to image adjust and curves. And the reason I like curves is because it kind of adjusts everything. It adjusts your color information, your brightness, almost kind of like an algorithm. It kind of does them all in sync. You don't wash out your whites or anything like that. It does a really nice job of just kind of brightening everything and maintaining the color consistency. And let's zoom in on this for a second. Now, let's say I wanted to really highlight the, the flower pot. I want to make it darker, just the flower pot. So now we're going to move into selection tools and Photoshop really is all about selection tools. It, everything else is secondary to selection. If, you, if you're not selecting properly, if you're, you have poor selection techniques, your outcome is not going to be as precise. Now, Photoshop puts such an importance on selection tools that you'll notice that it even has its own selection menu with options for whatever you select and you have several selection tools here. Now rather than get into the more common ones immediately, I'm going to start off with a selection technique that's a little more sophisticated but kind of easier to control and that is uh, using the masking tool. So to use the masking tool, I'm going to go to, right down here to the bottom and put myself in mask mode. And then I'm going to take my paintbrush. And when I select the paintbrush, you'll notice that the properties for the paintbrush all appear up here. You switch to any tool and you get the properties for that tool. So I'm on paintbrush. And I want a soft edge, a feathered brush. Because what, what a feathered brush does is the outside layers of the brush kind of blend in with the non-selected area so that it looks a lot more realistic. If you use a hard edge brush, let me show you what this looks like. If I use a hard edge brush and I draw a line here, you see how that's like the edge of that is very, very harsh. If I use a soft edged brush, you can see the edges are softer. So if I do any type of effect, it's the edges kind of wear out. The effect kind of wears out so that it's not as strong. It's stronger in the center, but as you get to the edge, the effect is less pronounced. So that allows you to kind of blend in uh, with the non-selected areas and make the photo look a little more realistic. So we said we were going to work with the flower pot. New commands, command minus to zoom out. And I take my brush and I'm going to start painting down here like this. Now a little quick trick, if you want your brush to be wider, you can use the open and close bracket keys. Now your keyboard's going to have to be on an English keyboard like um, American or uh, Canadian English. And the two keys to the right of the letter P, the open and close brackets, allow you to quickly adjust your brush. Now you notice my brush is slowly touching other parts of the photo. So I could put a smaller brush here, come in here, select this.
and so on. There we go. Okay. Now I'm going to turn the mask tool off. Now what mask does is mask protects an area. So in other words, if I do any sort of effect to this picture, the pot will not be touched by that effect. Let's try, for example, levels or curves. Let's go back to curves, which the shortcut was Command M. Let me drag down the levels and you'll notice that the pot is protected. It's masked. I'm going to hit escape to undo that. What I want to do is play with the pot. So I'm going to inverse this selection. Right now the pot's protected. Let's inverse the selection. So now it's the pot that will be affected by any manipulation that I employ and the rest of the picture is protected. So let's go back to, let's say levels this time, Command L, and let's drag the darks down. Now there's no particular reason why we'd want to darken the pot. Maybe it was just a little too bright. But there you go. And let's add one more effect to this pot. Let's change its color. So I'm going to go to Image, Adjust, Hue Saturation, and let's just change the hue here and see what happens. And now the pot is slowly changing color. If I go the other way, there we go. So before and after, it's not a big difference, but it's just to show you the type of effect you can you can have here. If I go back to image hue saturation, let's say I set it to reds, and I increase the saturation of reds. You can see, like if I really exaggerate it, what happens to the pot. Maybe the lightness. Bring it a bit down. Okay. I'm going to deselect everything now. Let's zoom out. And now I'm just going to do a quick manipulation. I'm going to punch out the greens and the reds. Now the reds are already pre pretty pronounced. Uh, we've got some mauve over here and we've got greens in the background. So going back to hue, image adjust, hue saturation or command U. I'm going to first go to reds. Actually, let's see what happens if we go to the master and we kind of saturate the whole thing. Let's see what happens. You notice the reds, the greens, everything gets saturated. Try not to go over like 20. When you start going into the 30s, 40s, it starts to look a little fake. And now I'm going to do hue saturation again, command U. This time I'm going to set the master onto greens. I'm only going to play with the greens and increase the saturation of the greens. Okay, and now let's go to the magentas. The magentas is kind of a reddish pink, which should affect the violets here. And you can see now I'm punching out the violet a lot more. I could do the same with the reds, but they're already so pronounced. I mean, if I overdo it, it's really going to look harsh. But anyway, let's do it at about a 20 and click OK. And there you go. That's just kind of to show you how you can play with your selection tools, in particular masking with a soft edged brush, a feathered brush, and then playing with your, uh, your levels or your curves and hue saturation.